my gold went up by one. If I jump over to the score block, score goes up by one. And I can just go back and forth and increase my score in gold. And now you can see it's gone up to four and five. Today, we're gonna create a scoreboard. The first thing you need to do is go to your player persistent variables, that's under settings, hit player variables. We're gonna create two variables. One is gonna be called score, and the second one is going to be called gold. We can now use them in our script. What we've done is we've created two triggers, one for gold, one for score. When a player enters this, it's going to increase their gold, and when a player enters this one, it's going to increase their score. And so this is just a demo to show you how you can increase score and gold. And so here we have when event triggers entered by player. If gold up is true, then we change. And if we have score up as true, we change our score. Variables, we've created two booleans that start as default false. When they're applied to the trigger, if you set it to be true, it will in that trigger will then increase either gold or score. And so I just recently learned you don't actually need to put an equal sign and set boolean true. You can actually just use this if statement. So if gold up is true, then we set, and we'll change this to gold, then we get the player persistent variable of gold for the player that entered the trigger, and we add one to that on that player. Then for score up, we do score, so then we get the player's current score, we increase it by one and set it new for that player as well. And so now we have set it up so that our triggers will increase the player's persistent variable. Player persistent variable is a number that is persistent between sessions. So if a player plays this game and they get a score and a gold that goes up to a certain amount, it'll still be that when they come back. So this is great for saving high scores. So now how do we display that up here on our text object? So right now we have a single tilde, which is our text object. We have it perfectly aligned with the board using the new snap tools. If we go and grab this snap corner and then find the edge here, there we are. And now it's aligned to this edge so we can slide it over, slide it down, and then turn off snapping and then use the blue to move in until it's just barely on the surface. And now we've got it aligned to the surface of our scoreboard. On our text object, we say when the world is started, send my event to self. This event doesn't need a particular name as we're only running my event inside the script block. When my event is received, we set part one, which is a string variable, to be the player from index using I am player. So if we come to our variables, you'll note we have five variables. I am player sets what player is it that's running on that text object. So every text object will increment starting at zero for the first player, one for the second player, and so on for however many players you have. Then part one is a string variable, and so is two, three, and four, and these are gonna combine to become our full display string. So we set part one to be the name of the player. We set part two to be a string, which is space, a vertical slash, space, score, space, colon, space. This creates spaces between the player's name and we're now going to get the score value of the player's persistent variable for getting player from index, I am player. We then display this as a string, otherwise it wouldn't combine correctly. So we change that number into a string and the difference between a number and a string is one can have letters and one can only have numbers. So it's important to change that. We then set part three to be the string gold space colon space. And then we use the gold value and we get that player from index as string. And then we set part four to be an exclamation point. And then under our display action, we use part one plus part two plus part three plus part four. And so it combines all of these using three plus signs. You put your main plus sign down and then you put a plus in the A slot and a plus in the B slot, giving you four slots for variables. And then we display that on self. And then we send my event to self with a one second update. So it updates once per second. The alternative is you can actually send my event to this object or you could listen for updates. So you could have a control object and when that control object receives an update, it would update this text. But in this case, we're just gonna keep it updating once per second because that's pretty simple. So now what we need to do is we go into our text object and we're going to attach our text object string. And now you can see it says lakes score gold and it's all there. So now we can scale this to be bigger. When you're making player scores, it's important to make sure it's big enough that it's readable. So for this scoreboard, depending on how many players we have, it would be ideal to maybe have two, one here on this side, one on this side, and then go down. So if we come in as a player, it's pretty clear to read it. And now if I come over here to our squares and I jump on our gold block, you can see my gold went up by one. If I jump over to the score block, score goes up by one. And I can just go back and forth and increase my score in gold. And now you can see it's gone up to four and five. So that is how we can create 
a scoreboard very simply. And if we need to duplicate this, all we do is we grab our duplicate tool, come down here to the slide, grab the green arrow, slide this down, and you do this for however many players you have, then you open up the properties, and then on I am player, we change this from zero to one. So depending on how many players you have, you're gonna to need to update this. And so the problem is when you duplicate it, you get to, you keep all of the properties from the first one. And since I want this to be a tilde if it's empty, and now it'll remain empty unless there's another player. Now that I've got a tilde, I can duplicate this tilde. We'll have that saved as the value for when there's no players. And under our main one, if I stop the world, you'll see it also turns into a tilde. And so it might be best to just stop the world when you duplicate these. And that is how we create a scoreboard. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!